Good morning, this is Lucretia. I'm here to do a rock lesson on Live the Moment. This will be your finishing product. So if you want to learn that today, follow me. So at the beginning, we're just going to basically start with a flat rock. I like to paint all my rocks white to brighten colors and black to darken colors. So base white, any white works. I do both sides. And then some other things you're going to need are some red. Really, the choices are yours, but I'm using red today. Some nutmeg. Some black. Some white. Some light blue. And just a shade of a darker blue, I like to use Tuscan Teal. We're also going to use some Golden Sunset. And some Flesh Tone. Other things you're going to want to have handy is a pencil. And an eraser. I use only white erasers on everything I do. Only reason is if you have some wet paint on your rock and you go to erase it, you're going to leave orange or whatever color. The white doesn't do anything. It comes off of everything. So, also you might want a ruler. It's up to you. And either some soda lids or any kind of lids will work. Anything that's a circle. You're going to want a bigger circle and a smaller circle. So, a stencil will work. A compass will work. Any of those things. And as you can see, I keep all my paints and lids just so I don't waste unless I'm going to do a lot of blending with different colors. Then I might put it into a tray. You're also going to want some paint water and a couple rags and some paint brushes. Um, I have a few varieties here, just one for filling in bigger spaces. So just a flat brush will work. Any fine tipped brushes will work. And I have blending brushes, any old brush that you don't mind doing a little blending with. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do here is we're going to start with the background. So grab your golden sunshine there and we're going to go ahead and start with the flat brush and wet it and just fill out the whole back spark. Let's just get that all done. This is only my second learning video for you. Um, I'm very new to it, so bear with me. I will try to keep it short and sweet and easy to understand. So if you do have any comments or questions, please do leave them in the comments below and I'll try to get to those. Also, if there's something that you wanna see me create, you can also leave that in the comments below. If you like seeing what I create, then just hit the like button so that I know that I can create more of those items. So today we're going to work on rock painting. This handy little turntable, little Lazy Susan, I love this thing because you, you just don't have to keep moving your rock and getting your fingers all wet and full of paint. I also use the lid of my paint water, which is a cornstarch container. Um, underneath my rock so I can get down below the edges. It's very, very handy. Okay, after you get a little good coating of that on there, we're going to use a touch of the brown. So grab your brown. Any chocolate brown will work. You're just, you're just adding dimension. So then you're also going to grab something you can blend with. An old paintbrush works. I actually like to keep them. These are great for trees and such. So, put a little bit of water on it, dab it pretty dry, and barely dip into your paint. I just put a very little on there. And then you're going to tap it all along the edges here. We're just adding dimension. It's going to take a little time. You want to blend. Don't worry about getting too much. If you get too much, just go back with your other color on your base. Like I'm going to just put a lot on here and just start blending it. I'm actually just making it antique-ish looking in the background. 
Sorry about the noise of the tapping of the rock. I'll try to make it a little quieter. I've been painting rocks for years. I paint them by the thousands. As most people who know me already, I donate a lot. I do them for the schools and such. I also teach classes at the churches and schools and so forth. So I've been painting for quite a while. There we go. Look at that. Totally changes your color tone. All right. So just clean your brush really well and set it aside. Now I'm going to go ahead and dry this really quick so I can move on to the next step with you. So bear with me. I'm just going to put it on pause for just a second and fast forward. All right, step number two, we're going to work on the clock. So we're going to work on this part. You just need something for the smaller circle and something for the larger circle. And I'm going to use a stencil. You want to give yourself a little space so that you can make a design of the rim of the watch. So for me, I look at the measuring of my rock here. And I'm going to want to leave space so I can put live my live the moment and you're also going to want a space for the little feather. So for me, I'm going to go by that. So let's find the center. Okay, we're going to do with this one. I'll put it more toward the middle so that you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to take my pencil and I'm going to draw a circle. And then I'm going to look for something to leave a little space, which this one's pretty good. And let's go with this one. Okay. Oh, that's a debatable. Let's try with this one. And just kind of make it guide along wherever you feel is in the middle. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use our flesh tone and we're going to paint the center of this rock. So I just use, you know, whatever this works. Get it a little wet. Let's fill in the center. And if you get along and you get on the outside of that inside circle, don't worry about it because you're going to be painting black. I'll cover all that. You just want a pretty good coating. If you see a little underneath the rocket, that's okay. You won't notice that either. So we will move on to the next step by grabbing your brown and we're going to use the same brush and you're just going to put a little teeny bit on the edge of your, your paintbrush just to start and we're going to add some antiquing to the edges. Just follow along the outside of your circle. Don't worry if some is darker and some is lighter because that's okay. That actually helps with the look. And then I just kind of blend it in by lightly touching my brush and going into the skin tone color. All right. And then we're going to add a little bit down here. All right. That's it with that, just by adding that brown. I don't know if you could see it from there, but I'll just bring it up closer. That might be a little bit too much light. So you just wanted a light brown. That's why we're just adding a little bit of brown, and you're just going along the edges. And that's it. You can leave a little darkness. It will not hurt it any. So after that... I am going to make a little black circle in the middle of my circle 
just a little one. You can use a dauber if you want, the little daubing tool. It's just the center of my clock. I'm going to go ahead and dry this really quick so that we can move on to the next step. Okay, so grab your smallest tool, your little paintbrush. I don't know where mine went. There it is. Okay, so we're grabbing our small paintbrush and we're going to take the paint and put some brown paint onto that brush and we're just going to tap it. Try to hit the center area of your circle. If not, don't worry about it. It's going to go on very little at a time. Or you can simply just daub. I'm just adding some brown in here break up the monotony you don't give an antique look you have to kind of just add textures which is all we're doing right now okay then you're going to take your brown and make sure there's no water on your little gold part or little metal part of your paintbrush you don't want that dipping down in there and running a bunch of water put a little paint on your brush go along to the edge and we're going to add some antique by adding some little cracks and designs in there and I just kind of go everywhere you can even start from the center of where your black dot is Three is enough on there. Then I take my black and I do the same thing with the very small tip of your paintbrush, very, very small, and I just kind of go along those lines that I just made with the black. If you really want them to pop out, or you can simply leave them brown, either way works. All right, then after you got the black, because if you see on my previous one, I did not add the black. I just left it brown. I didn't want it to pop out as much. So on this one, now we're going to add a little white to those. So same again, just a little bit of white on the tip of your brush. That's the one thing that's very important. Less is better. That's how I look at it. And if you notice that your white or whatever color you're working with is getting a little globby on your paintbrush, just simply rinse your brush. If you want to do that, keep your lines fine, especially if you're making little thin lines. Keeping your brush clean is very important. Okay, while we're here, I'm just going to put a little white line right there, just like that. Okay, so while that's drying, we're going to get ready for the next step. So I'm just going to dry that really, really quick, and then we're going to work on the outside of the watch. Alrighty, let's get to the black. So let's grab the black out. And we're going to draw up here just before we do that black actually. And we're going to draw the top part of the watch. So up here you're just going to grab wherever you want the top of your watch to be. I'm going to do it right here. And I'm just going to draw a small square on top of the watch. And then I'm going to draw a smaller square on top of that. And then on top of that, I'm going to take a little loop and I'm just going to loop, make a little circle on the top. That's where the attachment of your pearls will be. So then after you do that, you want to take your pencil and we're kind of going to make this design right here on mine. And you can make your pearls go wherever you want to. For me, I'm going to have them go behind the, the little time watch. 
So just take your pencil and put whatever design you're wanting to bring your pearls on. And I'm going to come down through. So if you're wanting to go behind your watch, you want to stop at the top of the watch. And just as if you're drawing, just kind of guide without not drawing on it. But go down to the bottom of your watch and pull it out around the bottom. Now I'm going to want my feather to be right here. So I'm going to draw the shape of a leaf, basically. Right there. But that might be a little bit too big of a feather for the size of this. So this is where this comes handy. So I'm just going to make a little bit smaller of a feather. So I'm just going to go a little bit smaller. There we go. That's better. All right. And then over here, before we get started with all that too, you're also going to write your words, live the moment. And it doesn't matter how you're just kind of getting your spacing. So just, I start at the end of the feather and I just put live the moment. All right, and that's all I do. So now let's get a hold of that black paint and get started. So grab your thicker, whoops, I'm dropping stuff. So grab your thicker brush, not super thick. This I think is a four. And we're gonna dig into that black paint and I'm gonna start up here just by painting in that square. And then I'm going to draw that into it. And then just follow along your pencil lines and fill that in. Just remember if you or having a hard time with your paint spreading, just add a touch of water to your brush, rinse it off, and dab it on a rag. This does not have to be perfect. Your circles, don't worry about that. If you have shaky hands or you know you're just learning and getting comfortable with the paintbrush, don't worry about it. Just do the best you can. me sometimes I'll find myself making it wider if I want it wider I'll look it over after I get my finish with my circle and I'll be like oh that would look better wider so you know just kind of playing with it Another thing to remember as you're painting, nobody's is going to look the same. It takes a lot of practice and everybody kind of has their own style and flair. Because I'll get a lot of people to say, oh, I can't do that. It just takes practice. One thing to remember is if you're making a mistake and you don't like the looks of it, you can always change it. curved a little. Okay. I think I'll just keep it at that. The non-perfect circle. Okay. So now after we got all that done, 
we're going to work on the inside by drawing our little lines that we have going, which are right here. And I'll show you how I work that. And you can use a pencil first if you want. To me, I'm just going to use the black paint. And I'm going to start from the top, right in the middle of that. Right there. And I'm going to come down just a little ways. And then I'm going to come straight down to the bottom and do the same thing. And then straight across. Now that you have those done, I hit like the center. I'll hit that I needed to hit two lines in there. And same thing all the way around. The next thing while we have the black out we're going to make our hands and so now we have to figure out what time we want to keep so right here i'm just going to make a line and a line and one's going to be a little longer because that will be your minute hand and then i just do a diamond shape at the end a diamond a triangle That's it for that part. Okay, so I'm going to dry this real quick and we'll start on with the next step. All right, so now we're on to the next step. I got it all dry and ready to go. So we're going to add a little bit of highlights to our, our watch. So grab your white and a small fine tip paintbrush. I can't really read to see what this is. I have, this is a 10 over 0. So we're just going to grab the white, just like that. And we're going to highlight our time watch. So come up here toward the top. And we're going to draw a little line lightly down one side of the circle there. Then we're going to hit the little square on the top and hit a couple lines halfway through the square. Can everybody see that okay? All right. Then on the little square below that, we're going to do it again. Make sure you don't have too much paint on your brush. You just want a little bit of white on the edges. These, this way you can keep your lines thin. Then just do a couple there on the bigger one. Going halfway through that square also. And you want to stop where the circle starts. Then you're going to do... I rinse my brush quite often, by the way, just so that you know. Keep those lines thin. So grab a little bit more white. All right, and then I'm going to hit along these lines that are along here. So just on one side, follow all the way around until you get completely around it. And you want to stay on the same side. This will make your lines pop. Okay, and then we're also going to make lines on our arrows. So just pick one side. Then we're going to do the same here. And then I'll highlight your arrows. Rinse your brush again and make sure that it's good and dry. And now we're going to do the little swirls that go along in our watch. So just take your white, same as we were doing the lines, make sure you don't have too much paint on your paintbrush. And we're just doing a swirl. So I'll start at the top here and I'm just gonna swirl. Not being picky about it, I'm just letting it kind of get on there. Don't worry about it, don't try to go back and touch it up. Just follow it 
and do your swirls and you can do little lines on the outside if you want and then I'm just going to swirl again and if you find your brush isn't guiding smoothly just add a little bit of water not too much you don't want the water to spread out so just make sure this part is dry and then I just keep going around until I have it all the way around so if you add white I don't worry about how much white is on one compared to the other because it will all blend together at the end so just keep swirling just patience and if you want to practice your swirls on a piece of paper before you even start this that's a good way too until you get comfortable with it and I just stop at the edge so I start in the center and swirl and I stop when it stops and I'm not picky about how far it went out I just continue and just keep swirling I hope everybody's enjoying themselves here and learning something different I'll do my best to kind of give you a variety of styles I do so many different arts and crafts that I'm trying to put videos out there but I don't know where to start I have so many that I want to show and I just hope I can teach it well enough for you to understand so that you can create some of these on your own. All right. So see, some are more white than others. It just kind of gives it variety. I never ever worry about that. So rinse your brush really well so the next thing we're going to start is down here at our feather so we're just going to let that be for a minute while it's drying and I want you to grab out your light blue and your medium blue that you chose and get those ready and you're going to need to touch a white on this one so grab a little bigger paintbrush I'm just going to use this one which is a four See how it looks? We're getting there. And we're going to do this little feather right here. I first want you to fill it in with the dark blue. There we go. Try not to add too much water to your paints because it'll take forever for it to dry. Enough to make it smooth so that you can spread it out easier, but not too much. So now we're going to get into the light blue. And I'm just going to kind of gather it up here just a little bit toward the top. And a touch down around the bottom. That's it. Just I put a little bit of paint on it. That's it. We're just adding dimension. Then we're going to rinse our brush again and dry it pretty well. And we're going to dig into the white with the same paintbrush. And I'm just going to grab it along the top, just like that. Kind of blending it in also, but not too much. All right, so now that we got that, because that's just adding more dimension we're also going to grab the white again just for a little bit on the tip of your paintbrush and let's just get around the bottom there. okay now it's really up to you how much highlight you want into your feather for me I just do a little on this one then we're going to take our dark blue with our smaller paintbrush 
So this one will work. I think this is a zero. No, it's a ten over zero tenths. I'm not quite sure how those are called. All right. And we're going to dark line it along the edge, just the top. That way if you use a lighter color. And then we're going to hit down the center. And I'm going to hit the center with this one. So if you want more dark on your feather instead of light, use the lighter color to do your lines. Okay, so after you did your center line, we're just going to follow the curve of your feather and we're just drawing lines. Just like that. Then we're going to do the other side. Just follow along the edge of your curve of your feather. Just like drawing a leaf. Okay, now after you've done that, we're going to take some white. It's like, oh my goodness, that looks horrible. But we're going to add some white. So just grab a little bit on the end of that. And we're going to go underneath each of those lines. And you're going to draw a line. You're also going to go down and draw a line along the blue of your center line. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just adding highlights. Just underneath each blue line. And that's it. So we're going to let that dry. So while we're letting that dry over there, we're going to come back over here to the, the watch. So here we're going to get some black. And I'm going to use my black with the same paintbrush. No, we'll use this one. And we're going to add a, quite a bit of water. And we're going to put a little water on our tray couple little drops and then you're going to barely touch the black and we're going to add that in there until you get a little liquidy mess we'll say okay so very watery black and we're going to do the shadows okay so to do the shadows let's get quite a bit on our brush here I'm going to set that down and we're going to come over here under our time watch, right at the bottom here where we want our shadow. And since we're going to be kind of on a surface, we're going to go straight. And if your item is round, you're going to want to go round to make that shadow. So the outside of your line should be round. Okay. And then we're going to do that also underneath the leaf. So start around the bottom of your leaf and follow the shape of it. And we're also going to bring that out a little bit. All right, we're going to come back over here and add a little bit more shadow now that's soaked in a little bit. There you go. And if you don't like your shadow, just take a little watered down water onto your surface with a rag and dab it dry. There you go. Now that we have that, now while we're doing that, we're letting those two things dry. We're going to start up here with the pearls and we're going to bring them down. 
So get your white and you can have a dotting tool if you want or the end of your paintbrush and that's what we're going to do the pearls with. Me, I'm going to use the tip of my number four paintbrush and I'm going to grab the white. And where we drew this pencil line, we're going to follow that with the dots. So just put a little bit on the end and I'm going to start down here. And we're going to take a dot and I'm going to leave a little space and make another dot. And try to keep them kind of, you know, the same, but don't don't worry if you can't get it exact. Like this one's fighting me. <laughs> I think I want mine a little bigger. There. Just leave a little space because we're going to add something in there too. And then I'm going to come up here where it started and I'm going to put a big dot. Because we're continuing. is battling me there. All right. Okay. Now that we have all those dots, you could take a smaller dotting tool or a smaller end. Me, I'm just going to use the tip of my paintbrush. Oh, let's see if I can find I got smaller dotting tools if you want dotting tools. I guess we'll use this one. And I'm just going to make little dots in between those dots. Just like that. We're just adding dimension. All right, and if you don't like the dots quite so small, you can always add them a little bigger, which is what I'm doing right here. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry that really quick and then we'll come right back to the finishing touches, which is just live the moment. All right, so grab your black. And you're going to also want some white in this one. And we're going to go ahead and get started with Live the Moment. You're going to want your smallest paintbrush. So mine is a zero tenths. I'm not quite sure if I'm saying that correctly on these paintbrushes. And you can use paint pens if you're not comfortable with a paintbrush. And we're just going to write the word out right over here. So first I do black and then I highlight it with the white and that's all it is. So remember when you wrote out the words, it doesn't have to follow that exactly. It's just to give you some space on what you wanted. Because those white erasers that I talked about, we're going to use those to erase the pencil marks after your paint has completely dried. And you want to make sure your paint's completely dry before trying to erase. So if you get painting and you realize that your letters are starting to get a little thick, just to avoid that, clean your paintbrush every once in a while with water and re-dip. That keeps your lines fine because the paint just starts building up on your paintbrush. I've been painting for quite a few years, so I'm pretty comfortable with the paintbrush, writing words and doing all these little teeny details. 
In fact, I'm probably more comfortable with the paintbrush than I am with the little paint mark paint pens that everybody has. So after I get lid the moment, I always like to put three little dots at the end. Again, you can use the tip of your paintbrush or the bottom of your paintbrush or a dotting tool. Okay, I'm going to have that dry pretty good and I'm also going to put the white on. Now with the white, I do the same. I use a very small paintbrush and I just go to one side of my black letter just to make the letter pop. And on the eyes, I always just one side of the circle. So let's go ahead and do that. Always on the inside of a letter if you want to add highlight to more than just a straight line. On my E's. And if you find that you went over a black a little, it's simple. Just go back with your black if you feel like you took too much away. So I'm going to come down to the little dots that are on the edge here and I'm just going to do the same as I did with my eye, just put it on one side. So if you like what's created please hit like and I can get a little idea of what everybody's wanting in my videos. I'm going to go ahead and let this dry really well and then I'll erase the pencil lines. But that is basically it for I Live the Moment Rock. So if you want to learn on my next rock, keep in tuned. Hit the like button and the subscribe button so that you can see some more videos. And let me know what kind of content that you like. I appreciate you coming. Have a great day and stay safe out there.